The LA Clippers have a couple of choices for their starting lineup in the upcoming season, and they won't know it until the roster is filled out, or should I say trimmed, with the amount of players they have right now. But a big topic of conversation is, can Kawhi Leonard play the power forward spot? And in this episode, I'm going to look at three aspects as to why I think he can and should on today's Locked On Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day. Your team every day. I'm your host, Darren Vizieri, born and raised in L.A. And going into my 19th season as a Clipper fan this fall, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. And, of course, subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more L.A. Clipper, L.A. Sports, and NBA history content. And Locked on Clippers is free and available on all your favorite podcast platforms, including YouTube, where I want you to comment whether you think Kawhi Leonard should start as our power forward this season. And the three reasons... As to why I think he should are the spacing, the modern NBA and what the power forward means now, and accommodating Terrence Mann. So let's start out by talking about the first thing, and that's the spacing. I think having Kawhi Leonard as our second biggest guy out there will be great for our spacing. Because not to say that our spacing was bad last year with Marcus Morris at the four because he is a three-point shooting threat. But having Paul George and Kawhi Leonard be our second and third tallest guys out there to start the game with Zubats, it really just is going to be hard for other teams to guard. Because not only do we have, I assume, whether it's Terrence Mann or I don't know who we'd start at the two, I feel like the only logical step is to start Terrence Mann if we play Kawhi Leonard at the four. But you look at that lineup, the spacing is pretty good. Obviously, with Russell Westbrook, who's not the best shooter in the world, you want ample spacing. And I think that Kawhi Leonard and Paul George out there with Terrence Mann would be really great. They all shot well from three last year. Now, there's a big fear about Terrence Mann in the sense that he doesn't shoot enough threes and he still hesitates on them. Well, I keep talking to fans about this, and here's my simple solution to that. Shoot more and shoot with confidence. Are you guaranteeing that his percentage is going to fall off a cliff if he shoots more threes? I, I mean, he, it may drop a little bit, but okay, he shoots 36% instead of 38 in, in, and also is getting more minutes. He will contribute in other ways that will make up for a 2% decrease in three-point shooting. The point is Terrence Mann should not be known as a non-spacer anymore. And here's the thing. He's also a great cutter. Let's get a hypothetical situation going, right? Paul George, high pick and roll, blitzed, throws the ball to Ivica Zubats in the short roll, and now Zubats is in the middle of the floor. You don't just want all shooters out there sometimes. It's nice to have a guy that is a good cutter that'll be in that dunker spot where Zubats can pass it down low and will have a layup. And Terrence Mann's really good for that. And I think with Kawhi Leonard being a threat on the outside, that'll open things up for them. So I think our spacing would just be really good. We'd have a lot of threats out there. And I think Kawhi would have a lot of room to work as well. As opposed to, I don't know, let's say a Robert Covington. I don't think it really restricts him that much, whether he's the three or the four, to be honest. But I do think with Kawhi Leonard at the four, we have a lot of offensive threats. And in the whole, you know, for the people that want James Harden to come along board, or to come on board, Kawhi Leonard would be our four. Because Russell Westbrook is not going to come off the bench. Anybody that suggests that or thinks that, I think they should throw that out the window because Russell Westbrook didn't enjoy coming off the bench for the Lakers. He came here to our side to get the role that we promised him, and that was to start at the point guard and be our floor general. So if I had to guess, I don't think Kawhi will play power, start at power forward. I think that Nicholas Batum or Robert Covington, which everyone is left over on the roster after a consolidation trade is made, because it's coming. The Clippers have 16 roster spots, uh, 16 contracts right now, and they're going to have to make some 
trimming or they have to trim some of the roster. And I think that one of the three, if not two of the three, of Nico Batum, Marcus Morris Sr., and Robert Covington will be sent somewhere else. I think one of those guys will start unless we get an upgrade at that position. Do I see K.J. Martin starting? Not really. No, I don't think he would start. Not on a team that has championship expectations this season. But I think if we have Kawhi Leonard at the four, that lets Terrence Mann start. And I think our spacing would be really good, honestly. I think that he'd have a lot of room to work. I think that he'd be surrounded by threats. And I just think that our offense would flourish. I really do. And I think that there are certain guys. I mean, Kawhi is still going to be guarded by the, the most elite defender on the other team, the most elite wing defender. But then who's guarding Paul George in that situation? Does he get the second best defender? Probably, right? But what if that guy's a lot smaller? And then it comes down to Paul George exploiting mismatches. So we'll have to see. You know, putting Kawhi Leonard at his natural position at the three and then Paul George at the two is fine. The only reason I'm suggesting this mainly, besides the whole spacing thing that I'm saying, is that I don't trust that that power forward, whoever that may be, whether it's Nico, Rocco, KJ Martin, or someone else, I don't trust that that player will be better than Terrence Mann. So the way I'm thinking is I just want our our most impactful five players to start. And I, I don't necessarily think Terrence Mann is more impactful than Norman Powell, but he does other things. Norman Powell, his role is to score and get to the basket. Well, even though we don't have that many guys that can get to the basket very well, in a starting lineup with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, you don't need more scores. You need complementary guys. And I think Terrence Mann is perfect alongside Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. And to, for him to start and Westbrook to start, you need Kawhi Leonard playing the four. And I think our spacing would be really good. But coming up, the main concern people have, Kawhi Leonard, can he handle the physicality? Is he big enough? Can he play the power four position? Will it be too taxing for him? Well, coming up, I'm going to explain why in the modern NBA, I think things are just a little bit different than they used to be. Going to be talking about that coming up. I got to tell you a little something about better help. And this episode is brought to you by better help. A lot of people are afraid to get help when they need it. And they're so busy focusing on other people that they're not always taking care of their own selves. And there's been a lot of times where I've just kind of questioned where I'm at and maybe I need some help. And we're in, in life, we're faced with a lot of tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. But sometimes when you're dealing with decisions around your career, relationships or whatnot, therapy helps you stay connected in many ways and find someone that can help you out on whatever that journey might be. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, so it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on n b a all right so the main reason that i think Kawhi leonard should play power forward is because in the modern nba the power forward position and i've said this so much does not mean the same thing let me just explain because I'm big on the evolution of the NBA. Like, this is what I do. This is what I study. This is what I've dedicated my entire podcast to and whatnot more than anything. And let me just say this. Around 2017, when the Golden State Warriors showed that pace, space, three-pointers are the new formula in terms of efficient offenses in the NBA, teams started downsizing. Back in the day, you wanted to play two big men. Why? Why? Interior defense, rebounding, and often to have another big body to play in the post. The post game is almost extinct. And I know I'm saying that with Jokic having won the championship and him being an incredible post player, but he is a rarity in today's game in the post. The post game is not the same. Teams want their second biggest guy to be a spacer. So I shouldn't even phrase it that way. They only want one guy max being a non three-point shooter more often than not 
Now, back in the day, you had really good mid-range shooters that played power forward, like Elton Brand for us, or even Blake Griffin had that 18-footer in his game before he went out to the three-point line. As this change started to happen, right on cue, Kevin Garnett, Chris ba well, Boss was shooting threes, but Kevin Garnett, Pau Gasol, these guys were really good from 18 feet. Zach Randolph, who we don't speak about here on Locked On Clippers, but these guys, Amari Stoudemire, these guys were really good mid-range shooters, but now they've asked him to stretch it out a little bit more. But those guys I named are much better interior players than we have at the power forward spot now. So let me just name some names who are starting at power forward these days. Aaron Gordon, Jared Vanderbilt, Jimmy Butler in the playoff. Actually, no, Kevin Love started. And then they started Caleb Martin for a couple games because Kevin Love wasn't doing much. Let's see who else. Tobias Harris. I mean, this is just off the top of my head. I don't have a list in front of me. The, the Mavericks started Maxi Kleba. Like, there are not that many true brute power forward guys that are going to take advantage on the interior and dominate you on the inside. Let me name some whose body type even resembled power forwards. By the way, we started Marcus Morris. He came in as a three. So let me just say, let's let's look. Jaron Jackson Jr., he's the size of a traditional power forward. Draymond Green played in the traditional power forward era, but he's literally 6'6". Who else is there? Um... I mean, Sabon DeMontis Sabonis got moved to the five. Keegan Murray was their power forward. Keegan Murray. He's a small forward in the 2000s or the early 2010s. So right now, the average power forward is listed at 6'8", 230. Kawhi Leonard is 6'7", 225. And I don't even know. That's what he's listed at. I don't even know if that's accurate, by, by the way. Have you seen Kawhi Leonard? Does he look 225? I think he looks at least 235. He's a tank. And plus... So th that's my main point. This whole, the, oh, it's too physical for him. What, what NBA are we watching? Are we watching the same game? Because if you, look, I saw Aaron Gordon dominate down low in the, in the finals. But if you think he's doing that against Kawhi Leonard, you are delusional. And if you think Kawhi Leonard's going to get injured because he got a bunch of hits to the chest or bang, bang, down low, I disagree. Let's examine the way Kawhi Leonard's gotten hurt as a clipper. Okay, so the first year he wasn't hurt at all. He tore his ACL. That was just a freak accident. And then he sprained his ankle against Utah, and then he tore his meniscus. That wasn't because he got dominated on the inside. Speaking of which, Kevin Durant was just starting at the power forward spot for the Suns. Kevin Durant. So those three or four matchups that we play against bigger guys, Carl Anthony Towns technically is a center playing the power forward. Let's look at the inverse for a sec. What if Carl Anthony Towns is guarding Kawhi? You think that's going to end well for him? No, it's not. So... Again, we get to stretch teams out with our spacing if Kawhi's at the four, but I just don't think he's going to get bullied. And everyone says, oh, I think it's going to be too physically taxing for him throughout the course of a season. You know who was playing power forward for Boston? Jason Tatum. So, no, first of all, teams are not going to just post Kawhi up because he's strong. Secondly, he's one of the best rebounders on our team. So having him around the basket is better. Third, we usually have him on their least threatening player to start games anyways. And a lot of times these days, the guy that's playing the four spot is the least threatening offensive player in terms of shot creation. That was the case for us this past season. So I think Kawhi Leonard will be fine guarding that guy. He'll be a good secondary rim protector. People are like, oh, he won't have a presence at the rim. So Marcus Morris did. Nicholas Batum was, I mean, Nicholas Batum actually is a decent shot blocker. But none of these guys to me are better rim protectors than Kawhi Leonard rotating. They're really not. Kawhi's hands are gigantic. He's got a long wingspan. He's got great timing because he's just an elite defender. And I think this way, you'll actually see his defensive skills come out more because we're not going to ask Kawhi Leonard to guard the best players all the time. He, to be able to be at the rim as a secondary rim protector, he can affect shots and board man gets paid. He's a great rebounder. So I actually think that it's not too taxing. So what's the alternative? You want to put him at the three so you can chase guys over screens on the perimeter? I feel like that's more likely for him to get injured. 6'7", 225, and the average is 6'8", 230, and you're telling me that he's too small? Come on, we're not watching the same NBA anymore. This is not this, it's a small ball, spread it out league. If you think Kawhi Leonard is too weak to bu uh, bully, bang, down low, whatever, Kawhi Leonard's usually the one initiating contact, not the one getting abused in the post. Who's going to post Kawhi up, seriously? Like, who, uh, besides a center, a great one. Only Jokic. 
and Joel, I don't even remember Embiid doing this, but only Jokic, I remember in the last, like, since we got Kawhi, has shown in the post that Kawhi just can't guard him. That's the only player in the post that he's, like, abused Kawhi from my memory. If you can remember someone else, please tell me. But the, in the modern NBA, I don't think it's going to be too physically taxing. Look at the players I'm naming. These guys are not... The traditional power forward is dead. It's not a thing. It's just a bigger secondary forward that you can ask to have some room protection and help you rebound. We didn't have any of that last season. So having Kawhi there mixed with the spacing, I think will pay dividends. But you know what? The main reason... I want him starting at the four is because it lets Terrence Mann start. And coming up, I'm going to be talking about why I think that is so important. All right. So the main reason why I want Kawhi starting is because if we don't start him, Terrence Mann won't start. I know Joey, when he came on the show, Joey Lynn, he said Terrence Mann at that power forward spot. And obviously we put it in quotations because Terrence Mann is not a power forward. He'd be the second biggest guy in the lineup because he's not even as tall as Paul George or Kawhi. But in the sense that he's at that dunker spot where Aaron Gordon plays for Denver and he likes to be around the basket, really good cutter. That's kind of why we say that because he's not the best shooter in the world, even though he's improving. But realistically, in the starting lineup, he would be listed as the two. So Kawhi Leonard would be the four or Paul George. It doesn't really matter. I think Kawhi is more fit for that because he's bigger. I've seen Paul George actually get abused in the post a little bit um, by bigger guys. Kawhi Leonard is a tank. So I want Kawhi starting at the four because let's say we start uh, Nico or Rocco or a new power forward that comes in or even KJ Martin then that means that we are probably going to start with Paul George, Kawhi, one of them, Zoo, Russ. Terrence Mann's going to come off the bench. That means l almost no minutes for Brandon Boston. And it's going to limit K.J. Martin's minutes if we bring back two of Rocco, Nico, and Senior. I think Terrence Mann needs to start. We saw how well it worked last season before Russ came. But it just seems like... In the playoffs, even in 2021, when Terrence Mann starts, we're just a better team. Because who's going to guard the point of attack? Let's have a real serious freaking conversation here. Who's going to guard the point of attack to start games? You want Paul George doing it? You want Kawhi doing it? Because I thought it was too taxing for them. Let's not have them start at the point of attack. Plus, teams are just going to seek out the weakest defender on a switch. If we have Russ, Terrence Mann, Kawhi, and Paul George, they're probably targeting Russ. And you know how personally Russ takes it when he gets targeted. When, when teams put him in the pick and roll, like, I want to go at you, that's when Russ t is like, uh-oh, who do you think I am? And that's why we need those four out there together. I get the concerns. Our bench is a little bit weaker. Okay, we have Bones, Highland, and Norman Powell for instant offense. Our defense is where it's a little concerning off the bench. But again, I think Brandon Boston has got some defensive chops off the ball. We need to see it. Bones Highland, I heard he was a horrendous defender before he came to the Clippers. And I don't believe so. I think he's not very good, but he's not awful when he's trying. And in the playoffs, he was trying. He has long arms, which you can see work out for him in the passing lanes. And when he's actually trying, his length allows him to get over screens and not just be dead on them. The only thing is he gets bullied a little bit because he's still really skinny. But I don't think he's as bad a defender as people think. And having watched John Wall and Reggie Jackson defend for the majority of last season, Bones Highland is not worse than they were. Definitely not worse than Reggie was. And definitely not worse than Lou Williams was that last half season before he got traded to Atlanta. So, Bones Highland, Norman Powell, Brandon Boston. Probably, I would like to see Nico Batum stay. And then we have Mason Plumley back now. And then KJ Martin. So, it's still, Brandon, there's probably no room for Brandon Boston, if I'm being real. Which is sad, because I really want him to get minutes. But then again, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are going to miss games. So, Hopefully, Brandon and Amir Coffee are the 11th and 12th men, or at the very least, 12th and 13th. This year, they were that, but there was just so much roster change that they never really got any consistent run, neither of them. So, my thing is this. I want Terrence Mann to start and play 30-plus minutes. Now, will he play 30-plus minutes? Probably not, just knowing the way he's used on this roster. But if he's playing 25 to 30 I think it really helps our team, and I think to ensure that, we need him to start. Because the problem is, when he comes off the bench, and he plays like eight straight minutes, and then he goes to the bench for a five-minute rest, it's halftime. Now he's only played one stint in the first half. I don't like that. He needs to be playing more. 
He needs to be maximized on this team because he's the only player of this kind that we have. He'll guard the best player. Okay, he won't be a lockdown defender, but he's going to guard the point of attack better than other guys. He's a great cutter. We need him to move off the ball. He adds athleticism, rim pressure, and he can play well on the break. He's fantastic in transition, and he's a really solid rebounder as well. And we just need guys going to go out there and give effort. And I think him playing with Russ is fantastic for several reasons. One, Russ likes to push. Terrence Mann likes to push. Two, adds to our athleticism and rim pressure. And three, great passers love cutters. And Terrence Mann is a very good one. So to ensure that Terrence Mann starts, because he won't be starting at point guard, because Tyler doesn't believe in him as a point guard, he needs to play the two, and Kawhi Leonard needs to start at the four. Now, here's the big question. Does Kawhi Leonard want to play the four? To me, it shouldn't matter. I don't think it's that big a difference. But then again, he's the one playing it. I can't speak on that. As a coach, you need to do what you need your players to buy into things. You can't have them just say, oh, you're going to play the four whether you like it or not. That's just not how it works unless the player really can suck it up and do it. But I don't know. I don't think Kawhi's the type that would deny that and say, I don't want to play the four coach. I don't think so because, it's again, it's not the 2000s or the early 2010s. It's not like he's going up against Tim Duncan, but we'll have to see. I think it would be the best move because I want Terrence starting. Like, who are we going to start beside if we don't start uh, Terrence? It would have to be a four. It would have to be somebody we pick up. And I don't think if Nico Batum is our best power forward or Robert Covington is our best power forward, I don't think that that's – and he's starting. I don't think that's good enough to win the championship. I really don't. But Terrence Mann starting is massive, and I think the way to make that happen is to start Kawhi. In terms of the spacing, I really disagree with people that say that the spacing isn't going to be good. If it doesn't work out, then we'll make a change. But Terrence Mann shot 38% from three last season. All we need to do is just encourage him to shoot the open shots more. Until your percentage is trash, keep firing them things up there. Keep the defense honest. And that's not something he's incapable of doing. And knowing Terrence Mann, who's improved a little bit every year, he's probably putting in work in the days as we speak on those threes, especially the corner threes, which it seems like he's improved on every single season. And by the way, as far as the James Harden stuff, it sounds like Norman Powell and Terrence Mann are the reason why the trade's being held up. So again, I really love how loyal the Clippers have been to Terrence Mann. I know he's been in trade talks the last year a lot with Kyrie, with Fred Van Vliet. When now teams want Terrence Mann because they see his value. The question is, do we see his value? And here's the thing. If Terrence Mann's not going to play that much and we're going to do the same thing that last season, this upcoming season, then fine, trade for Harden because you're not going to use him to the best of his abilities. But my thing is we need someone to start games guarding point of attack. And I don't... You're going to make 34-year-old Nicholas Batum do it again? Like, come on, you're asking too much of him. Robert Covington, not that guy to guard point of attack. Paul George and Kawhi, okay, make them do it the whole game. Let's see how that ends. Terrence Mann is the jack-of-all-trades guy, the guy we need to use in this role. And I think to maximize him, we need him to start. That means Kawhi Leonard needs to play the four. So in retrospect, our spacing would be fantastic with those threats. The modern NBA, it does not deploy true power forwards all the time. Okay, I get it. When we play Giannis, what, two times a season? So that's what we're going to do. Look, let me see Giannis try to post Kawhi up, for real, and see how much success he has. I'm telling you, it's not all that. Because he... Giannis overpowers a lot of people. I don't think he's overpowering Kawhi, and he's damn sure not outskilling Kawhi. I can promise you that because Giannis' skill in the post is still suspect, and it's irrelevant what Giannis does because we play him two times a year. So that's all I got on that. T-Man, though, we, helping T-Man be the best version of himself for this team, I think that is intertwined with Kawhi playing the four. But let me know what you think of this discussion. It's a good discussion. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. Subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more LA Clipper, LA Sports, and NBA content. Locked on Clippers is free and available on all your favorite podcast platforms, including YouTube. And I need you to comment on the pin question. And by the way, a special shout out to all the listeners, Clipper Nation. We have now reached 3,000 subscribers. I couldn't be more thankful. Um, to you guys for listening and giving me your constant feedback and supporting me as a solo host, um, so, you know, doing podcasts on the LA B team, so to speak. But you guys show that we are going to continue to move up this ladder. I think we're like 24th out of 30 on NBA teams. And now that we're in the 3000 territory, there's a lot of other teams locked on NBA channels in that 3000 territory that I'm looking to pass up. So if you're a locked on NBA host listening to this and you're in the 3000 category, watch your back because I'm coming for that ass, baby. The age old proverb continues. Go Clippers.